Google just introduced the most anticipated AI product so far called Gemini. And Gemini is the first AI product to actually beat ChatGPT, GPT-4, in some of the benchmarks that I'm gonna show you in this video. And Google is calling this the first step in truly universal AI models. Now I'm gonna show you a video here that Google put together in 90 seconds. They did a great job explaining what this is. But the biggest part of this AI is that multimodal part, meaning not only can it understand and write text and code, it could also do audio, images, and video. This makes it really multimodal. They're trying to do all the things that a human could do. If I were to look at the foundational breakthroughs in AI over the past decade, Google has been at the forefront of many of those breakthroughs. Gemini is our largest and most capable model. It means that Gemini can understand the world around us in the way that we do. So not just text, but also code, audio, image, and video. Taylor used Gemini to search a large corpus of scientific papers for key information. We wrote a prompt. With its advanced reasoning capabilities, Gemini was able to distinguish between papers that were relevant to the study and those that weren't. I'm delighted to introduce AlphaGood 2, powered by Gemini. When we evaluate AlphaCode 2 on the same platform as the original AlphaCode, we solve almost twice as many problems. Gemini on its own has the ability to transform software development as we understand it. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. But safety and responsibility has to be built in from the beginning. And that has oriented us to be both bold and responsible together. Developers and enterprise customers are going to figure out really creative ways to further refine our foundational models. Gemini will be available in three sizes. Gemini Ultra, our most capable and largest model for highly complex tasks. Gemini Pro, our best performing model for a broad range of tasks. And Gemini Nano, our most efficient model for on-device tasks. It's been a monumental engineering task, which has been, you know, very challenging, but also very exciting. And as this video mentioned, Gemini is going to come in three sizes, Ultra, Pro, and Nano. Now, the Pro version of Gemini is going to be available starting today, and it's going to take place right on Google Bard. So if you go to bard.google.com, this is the same Bard that's been around for a while. If you haven't used it before, it's like ChatGPT, it's like Claude. You could ask a question. It's an AI chatbot. But Gemini Pro is gonna power Bard. So you're gonna use the chat interface of Bard, but now you're gonna have all the functionality of Gemini Pro. And right now, text-based prompts. So the text that comes with all the new reasoning, all the new understanding and summarizing, coding, planning, all of that, that's part of Gemini Pro, is right now rolling out inside of Bard. Some of the other functionality, like the way that it would understand images and interact with sound and video, those are gonna roll out a little bit later. So it looks like those are not just out yet. And they're gonna roll this out in more than 170 countries, which is great. And let me show you some of the benchmarks here that Google has shared with us. So when it comes to text, you could see in some of this benchmark right here, so this MMLU benchmark, Google Gemini Ultra is at 90% versus GPT-4, going through the same thing is ranking at 86%. So this is based on 57 questions in STEM, humanities, and other subjects. So they run these tests through these large language model AIs, and these are the results that they got. This is based on text. So you could look at some of these numbers. I'm not gonna go through every single one, but as you could see, in math, in coding, in every single test, except this one it looks like, which required a heavy prompting. This is a 10-shot prompting sequence. So they had to give a lot of prompts to get it to actually outperform GPT-4, outperform Gemini. I've never seen a single benchmark in any benchmark study that I've looked at where GPT-4 is not winning. Then in the multimodality, so we have images, videos, and audios. You could see these three. Again, in images, it's outperforming GPT-4 vision in all these benchmarks in video is beating it and in audio OpenAI has something called whisper and gemini pro is beating whisper so you could see these fine prints where it says gemini ultra so they did pick and choose so when gemini pro could beat whisper they put gemini pro but sometimes they have gemini ultra beating gpt4 and right now with all the large language models all the ai multimodality ais gpt usually beats everyone right 
These benchmarks released by Google, Gemini is beating GPT-4. So this is going to put it right ahead as the best large language model and best multimodal AI model out there. So you could look at this. I'll put a link to this page as well in the description if you want to see some of these examples. They have a lot of different videos that they just released today showing you a lot of these functionalities. But I do want to play one of the videos they have, and that one is going to show you some of the functionalities that the multimodality of Gemini has. So it could understand things like I've never seen before when it comes to understanding images, what's happening on screen, and audio too. All right, testing Gemini. Here we go. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing, with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black, or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu is pronounced with a first tone. In Mandarin, there are four tones, which are essential to distinguish the meaning of words. The first tone is a high, level tone. Oh, okay. The duck is in the middle of the ocean. There is no land nearby for the duck to rest or find food. It is unlikely to find ducks here naturally. Okay, based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called, Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. Clue 1. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's easy. Clue 2. This country loves football and has won the most men's World Cups in football history. Hmm. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. I know what you're doing. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. What do you see now? The fingers are spread out to look like the wings of a butterfly. What's this? Big ear and barking mouth. A dog. Sweet. The coin should be under the right hand. Hmm, I don't know. The coin is in the left hand using a sleight of hand technique to make it appear as if the coin has disappeared. Both objects are round and flat. There you go. Both are food. The orange is a healthier choice than the cookie. Citrus can be calming and so can the spin of the fidget toy. They are both examples of popular toys that have been enjoyed by children and adults alike for many years. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? Ooh, I'll keep those in mind. Which way should the duck go? Going left leads to a duck, which is a friend. Going right leads to a bear, which is a foe. It is better to make friends than foes, so the duck should go left. <laughs> Smart choice. This is a picture of a crab. That's right. Is this the right order? No, 
The correct order is Sun, Earth, Saturn. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. Which looks more fun? The one on the right, because it has a loop. What do you think this person might be saying? How about a woohoo? Oh, I love that. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. Given that you added drums, how about some 80s hair metal? Alright, I see you've added a palm tree to the drawing. Change it up with some beachy vibes. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice! What do you think might happen next? The cat is going to jump to the wall and stick the landing. It's going to be a perfect 10. Oh, and it's a miss. It looks like it was just a little too far away. But don't worry, the cat is a natural athlete and it will be back up there in no time. Okay, I've got one more for you. Describe the drawing I made. It is a simple line drawing of the constellation Gemini. You did a good job of capturing the beauty of Gemini. Nice, that's it. I think we're done. Now, if you go to BARD, Gemini Pro is what's going to power BARD, but Gemini Ultra looks like will come to BARD early next year. This is a really fantastic upgrade if we get the best version of Gemini inside of BARD that we all have access to for free. Now, since BARD has been basically re-engineered with Gemini Pro, I'll do a brand new tutorial to show you exactly how to take benefit of BARD. And we're gonna roll out a whole new BARD course inside of Skill Leap AI. So if you're not familiar with that, we have a whole AI learning platform where we have over 15 different generative AI courses right now. And we roll out two to three courses per month and BARD and Gemini is gonna be one of those courses. So if you wanna to subscribe to that, that is a monthly subscription with all the courses in one bundle if you wanna stay up to date with AI. So I'll link that below. And in the next video, we'll jump into BARD. Hope you found this useful. I'll see you next time.